Permit to work system on board. A permit to work system is a formal process used to authorize work on a ship that is considered to be hazardous. The purpose of a permit system is to ensure that all necessary safety precautions are taken before, during, and after the work is performed. What are the categories of work that normally require a permit system? 1. Entry into dangerous, enclosed space. 2. Any work requiring use of gas testing and or equipment. 3. Hot work. 4. Working at height, working aloft, 5. Working over the side. 6. General electrical, under 1,000 volts. 7. Electrical high voltage, over 1,000 volts. 8. Working on deck during adverse weather. and nine, lifts, lift trunks, and machinery. The list is not exhaustive. There may be other categories that may require a permit. The permit system typically includes the following steps. One, identification of hazardous work. The first step is to identify all work that is considered to be hazardous. Two, risk assessment. Once the hazardous work has been identified, a risk assessment must be performed. The risk assessment should identify all of the potential hazards associated with the work and assess the likelihood and severity of each hazard. Three, development of safety procedures. Based on the results of the risk assessment, safety procedures must be developed for the hazardous work. The safety procedures should specify the specific safety precautions that must be taken to mitigate the identified hazards. Four, issuance of a permit. Once the safety procedures have been developed, a permit must be issued for the hazardous work. The permit should specify the specific work that is authorized, the safety procedures that must be followed, and the duration of the permit. Five. 
5. Supervision of the work. The work must be supervised by a qualified person to ensure that the safety procedure are being followed. Six, close out of the permit. When the work is complete, the permit must be closed out. This involves documenting that the work was completed safely. And that all of the safety precautions were followed. The permit system is an important part of the shipboard safety management system. SMS. It helps to ensure that hazardous work is performed safely and that all potential hazards are identified and mitigated. If you are working on a ship, it is important to be familiar with the permit system and to follow the safety procedures that are specified in the permit. This will help to ensure that you work safely and avoid accidents or injuries. Benefits of using the Permit to Work system. One, it helps to prevent accidents and injuries. Two, it improves safety awareness among crew members. Three, it helps to ensure that all work is performed in accordance with safety regulations. Four, it can help to reduce insurance premiums. Permit to work is already in the forms in the safety management system. And it also includes the safety checklist and necessary precautions to follow in conducting the hazardous work. It must be prepared prior to doing the work and must be signed by the master. It is normally prepared by the department heads and approved by the safety officer or the master depending on what is written on the SMS. Some companies require also the crew involved in the work to sign the document. Entry to Enclosed Confined Space Permit Enclosed or Confined Spaces These are areas that are not normally open to the atmosphere such as tanks, drums, and compartments.
Confined spaces can contain hazardous gases or fumes, so it is important to ventilate the space before work begins. And to wear appropriate personal protective equipment. PPE. Five sections of the entry to enclosed space permit. One, scope of work must be specified in the form such as location, validity, work to be done, and reason for entry. Two, checklists, risk assessment, toolbox meeting, pre-entry and preparation checklist, breathing apparatus, and additional precautions. Three, certificate of checks, signatures of the competent person and the authorized officer. Four, personnel entry. Names of personnel to enter enclosed space. Time in and out of the confined space. Five, cancellation of certificate. For example, the work has been completed or canceled and all persons and equipment have been withdrawn. The authorized officer must sign and indicate the date and time of completion or cancellation. Entry into enclosed space pre-entry checklist. One, is the space thoroughly ventilated? Two, is the atmosphere inside tested and found safe? Three, is the space secured for entry, isolated for safe entry? Four, is a testing equipment available for regular checks? Five, is the ventilation arranged for the duration of the permit? Six, is there adequate access and lighting? Seven, is rescue and resuscitation equipment available at the entrance? Eight, is the competent person in attendance at the entrance? Nine, is the OOW advised of the planned entry? 10. Is the communication arrangements agreed? 11. Is the emergency and evacuation procedures agreed? 12. Are all equipment to be used of appropriate type? 13. Are PPEs ready to be used? Safety helmet, safety harness, etc. 14. Acknowledged and signed by persons entering the space. Working aloft or working at heights and working outboard or working over the side. Working at heights or aloft. This includes any work that is performed above six feet from the ground. Working at heights can increase the risk of falls, so it is important to use fall protection equipment and to take other precautions to prevent falls. Working outboard or over the side includes any work over the side of the ship
where there is a risk of falling into the water. Four sections of the Working Aloft Outboard Permit. 1. Scope of work must be specified in the form such as location, validity must not exceed 8 hours, and the work to be done. 2. Checklist, risk assessment, toolbox meeting, preparation checklist, and additional precautions. 3. Certificate of checks, signatures of the competent person and the authorized officer. Four, cancellation of certificate. For example, the work has been completed or canceled. And all persons and equipment have been withdrawn. The authorized officer must sign and indicate the date and time of completion or cancellation. Working aloft outboard, content of preparation checklist. One. Is the duty officer informed? Two, are warning notices posted? Three, is the on-deck supervisor identified? Four, are equipment in good order? Five, if work is in funnel, is the duty engineer advised and the whistle isolated? Six, if work is near radar scanners, radio aerials, isolate scanner and aerial and notify the bridge. Put notices on the radar and radio. Seven. If work is over the side, is the duty officer engineer advised? Is life buoy and lifeline ready? Eight, are PPEs ready? Safety helmet, life jacket, safety harness, etc. Nine, are all tools to be raised and lowered secured on a lanyard? 10. Has a plan for rescue agreed? 10. Permit to work general. PTW general is a permit that contains all of the hazardous work that require a permit. It is like a permit to work in one for all related jobs, such as entry to enclosed space, hot work, working aloft or outboard, etc. Hot work. This includes any work that involves welding, cutting, brazing, or soldering. Hot work can create sparks or flames that can ignite flammable materials. So it is important to take special precautions to 
prevent fires and explosions. Working with hazardous substances. This includes any work that involves chemicals, fuels, or other hazardous materials. Hazardous substances can pose a variety of health hazards. So it is important to follow the appropriate safety procedures when working with them. Working with machineries. This includes any work that involves moving machinery or equipment. Machinery can pose a variety of hazards, such as crushing, cutting, or electrical shock. So it is important to follow the appropriate safety procedures when working with it. Working near energized electrical equipment. This includes any work that is performed near electrical cables or equipment that is energized. Energized electrical equipment can pose a serious shock hazard. So it is important to de-energize the equipment before work begins and to take other precautions to prevent electrical shock. The permit to work presented is only an example. Check your safety management system for the different permit to work forms. Always follow the permit to work system. Remember this. The SMS is provided for the safety of the crew. It is your job to follow the contents and be safe. Safety is not an option, but a necessity, so that when you are safe, your family will also be. I hope you find this lesson informative. Enjoy learning! See you!